These sweatshops are my kingdoms. They may be filled with seldom, but all I care are for the products that the workers must conduct. One thing that I dislike and you're fired. A worker that is injured or tired, I can replace with a new group that is hired. Money is what they desire. From the work, the pain is what they receive. Working happy here is not guaranteed. I hire inspectors to make them work faster. The workers need to bow down to me like I am their master. The Boss of Everything, written by Christina. Sweatshops are working environments that possess three major characteristics long hours, low pay, and unsafe or unhealthy working conditions. Sweatshops may also have policies that severely restrict workers' freedoms, including limiting bathroom breaks and even conversations with fellow workers. At its worst, violence is used against sweatshop workers. Sweatshops have been a factor in the production of goods around the world for centuries, but the globalization of business has led increasing numbers of major corporations to take advantage of low-cost sweatshop labor in developing countries. Recent examples of sweatshop conditions in the garment industry have caused an international outcry by labor leaders, activists, and government officials. Although manufacturers tend to deny it, sweatshops still exist even in the United States. Okay. ¿Me podrá decir su nombre? What is your name? Silvia Severo. Where, where did you work? ¿Dónde trabajó? American Painter World. ¿Cómo hiciste de ese trabajo? Don't, um, where did you hear about it? Uh, por una amiga. ¿Por una amiga? ¿Qué fue el proceso para entrar a, a trabajar ahí? What was the process to work there? Uh, a llenar una aplicación, entregársela a la secretaria y, y luego me llamaron después, como a la semana. Para una entrevista, ya me dijeron que fuera a trabajar el lunes. ¿Y cuánto fue lo que pagaba, pagaban por hora? What was the pay rate? En el mínimo 5.75, creo, en el, era, era en aquel entonces. ¿Cuántos años tenías? How old were you? Como 42, yo creo. ¿Dónde era esta compañía? Where was this company located? En la calle 52 y Avalon. En, en Los Ángeles. ¿Y en qué año fue cuando empezaste a trabajar allí? What year was when you started working there? Era 90 y 99, creo. 99. Okay. ¿Y cómo era el tiempo de los lunches y breaks? How was the timing on their hours and your break, your lunch? Mm -hmm. Pues el tiempo empezaba a cortar desde que sonaba la campana y teníamos que ir corriendo a calentar la comida. Luego éramos bien muchos. Éramos muchos para calentar la comida y a veces te la tenías que comer casi fría porque no alcanzabas a calentarla en los 10 minutos que daban de break. ¿Y era difícil trabajar ahí nomás hablando español? Was it hard to work there only speaking Spanish? Pues sí era difícil porque el, te traían una raya, te, te ponían, estaban y que apúrate y que eso y que el otro, te ponían hasta nerviosa de tanto que te daban presión. ¿Y nunca había injusticia en el trabajo? Was there ever any injustice in the work area? Pues sí, porque como ellos nomás te usan, nomás. In partnership with Portland State University and the International Council of Museums Committee for the Collections and Activities of Museum Cities, CAMOC, museumofthecity.org touches upon the origin of sweatshops. The terms sweating, sweat system, and sweatshop 
were first used in the 1840s. The earliest definition of the sweating system did not refer to the conditions of the workshops. Instead, it refers to the relationship between designers, producers, and workers. In the sweating system, designers of garments would contract many different small shops. Each shop would work one part of the garment, one shop for sleeves, one shop for buttons, etc. This work was carried out in small home workshops, often by the family of the subcontractor. These small home workshops paid their workers by the piece they completed. In an article titled Sweatshops by journalist Amanda Wilson for the Atlantic International Studies Organization, the sweatshops of the 19th and early 20th century evolved and progressed with the development of the apparel industry. Sweatshops built up the industry to what it is today. Sweatshops are no longer a force in developing the national economy. They only serve the needs of overconsumption and materialism. However, one could also argue that there are many other things a country needs in order to become a developed country. The existence of labor laws and industry regulations should also be a prerequisite for entering a certain sector of the economy, yet it rarely is. Cheap labor is often the only area in which many countries can claim a comparative advantage, yet the question must be asked, for who exactly is this an advantage? What you can do in accordance to greenamerica.org 1. Demand sweatshop-free products where you shop. 2. Buy union-made, local, and second-hand. And last but not least, 3. Buy fair trade. Through the purchases you make and those you choose to avoid, you have the power to create an economy where child labor and sweatshops cease to exist. And your voice, together, with the voices of others, can help encourage companies here and abroad to ensure that all workers are paid fairly and treated with respect. By taking one or more of the steps outlined, you can make a real difference.